China's alignment and friction with DNC America. So topic report, China-U.S. tension versus China-DNC alignment. This is from the Free Beacon. Chinese propagandists tout New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman's comments. Chinese state media are trumpeting New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman's China-friendly comments, the latest example of the gray lady's ties to the China pro propaganda or apparatus. Absolutely. Uh, when Friedman, a longtime columnist for the Times, participated in March 29th fireside chat with the Center for China and Globalization. That's a Beijing think tank group. Yeah, this is this. Is, now, remember, these are the quote unquote left. These are the these are the moral supremacists. These are the ones that have been using morality as a bludgeon to beat most of the poorest. I mean, th these uh, almost always in, in any given situation, wherever any system seeks to rule coercively using moral supremacism as its guide, the people who end up suffering the most, who end up being limited the most, are the poorest. The wealthy can buy special dispensations. The poorest cannot. So Thomas Freeman is a billionaire enabler and also a fascist enabler because he is enabling China. While he pretends to be one of the one of the moral supremacist leftists of America. Chinese state media are okay. When Freedom in a long time columnist for the Times. Okay, where are we getting to? Where are we left off? Here we go. So he's talking to the Beijing think tank, the state-owned China Global Television Network, broadcast the entire go minute. 60 minute, I think you meant. Oh, 90 minute, not, not 90 minute interview. Once the interview was over, the network disseminated the interview as an example of a Western intellectual calling for improved relations between the superpowers. Freedom said 1979 to 2019 was a golden era of global prosperity and peace with the U.S. and China at the core, and the two countries need to find ways to work together for the sake of the world's development. Because the corporate nationalists are relying fundamentally on the Chinese market to enable them to they'll create a product that serves the Chinese audience, but they will create products over here that make American audiences. This is unaccountable nationalism let loose in America and enabled and funded and supported by the Democrat National Committee, the DNC. The, the, well, I'll call it a corporation. It's a corporation. And, and it gets complicated. It gets very complicated. When you look over here, U.S. government concerned China's digital yen could threaten dollar as the world's dominant reserve currency. This is Bitcoin.com. Now, there's a number of things going on in here when you see, because I know that when you talk about how the DNC is absolutely in bed with China, it's not like the DNC is interested in rolling over and playing dead for China. You're talking about two wolves, two vicious wolves that find usefulness in each other but at the first chance they get, we'll literally rip each other to shreds. And I do believe that China helped very much the DNC win the mass mailer election, such as that was. But that doesn't mean that China has a trump card over the DNC and, and they can blackmail them. They can't. Because if China, if it were to be exposed in America that China really did help the DNC, the immediate response from America after they removed the DNC from power would be war with China. And I don't want that. So the DNC has cards on them. They have cards on them. There's mutual assured destruction to a certain degree. But within those parameters, China and the U.S. can still play. And they're playing a very serious game. The DNC ultimately hopes to use China's power to enable it to subvert the American people, to kill King Bill, the Bill of Rights, the only king that matters in this country, the only leader in this country that matters is King Bill, the Bill of Rights. And once that's done... They will. They, they do not intend on being second class to China. The, the corporate nationalists that have thrown in together, they do not intend on the United States of America being a Chinese vassal state. They intend on the United States of America being a corporate nationalist state. So it's complicated. So you're going to see stories, and these stories are legit. And, and, and the Biden administration, such as that is, is interested in undermining Chinese power even as it relies on it. So you'll see one hand saying Thomas Friedman, while the other hand is saying uh, government concerns about Chinese digital yen. And I want to add this as well. There's something called, well, my brother and I, we refer to this, and I'm talking about the editor of The Freedom. It's my brother, identical twin, Bill Collier. 
we refer to this, we have our own version of dialecticalism. And our dialecticalism in a, in a strategic power sense is the dialectical tactic is to go in the opposite direction that people think you would be going if you were taking a certain turn. So, for instance, if you really were in partnership with China and you didn't want people to know, you're going to give some token resistance. So there's some of that going on as well. But I think it's more than that. I do think that there is legitimate competition between these two and both of these two. And by these two, when I say the DNC, the DNC is, is essentially corporate nationalism at this point. That's what it is. Forget the woke stuff. Concentrate on the fact that they're corporate. That's what they really are, corporate nationalists. Unaccountable power that enables the, the billionaires to assure that they'll never have to face competition again. And neither China nor the corporate nationalists of America envision a world in which the other exists. I can assure you that. And I think that uh, maybe I'll, well, I'll get one more. Uh, Biden admin gives valuable defense contracts to China collaborator from Free Beacon. The Biden administration awarded a lucrative defense contract to a Singaporean company that works with Chinese military firms. Why would you even think to do that? Why would we even think as Americans to hand over all of our critical medical production to China? It's because we are not ruled by Americans. We are ruled by corporate nationalists, and they have no nation outside of the one that's in their head. They have no accountability outside of pure, unadulterated, violent power. Outside of that, they have no accountability, and they have no desire to have any accountability because these people are fundamentally averse to competition. They're anti-competitionalists is essentially what they are. Their version of quote-unquote capitalism and China's version of quote-unquote communism are both the same thing, anti-competitionalism. And there you go.